Hello there and welcome to Shots in the Quark. In this video I'll be showing you a quick and easy way to see how time dilation works in special relativity. If you've heard anything about special relativity then you'll almost certainly have heard that travelling at different speeds has an impact on how quickly time passes for you. It turns out that the faster you move, the less time you experience. This is what's known as time dilation. Now, if you've never studied relativity before, then you may think some complicated maths and physics goes into showing this. But it turns out that this time dilation effect can be very easily derived for a special kind of clock called a light clock. A light clock is a clock made up of two mirrors, one above the other, and a beam of light which bounces between them. We can also attach a detector to our bottom mirror, which detects when the light beam strikes it. So when we switch our light clock on, a beam of light is emitted from the bottom mirror and then bounces back and forth between the two mirrors. Each time this beam of light strikes the bottom mirror, the detector makes a tick sound like a clock. Our light clock here is an accurate clock. There's exactly the same length of time between ticks of the clock. Now let's suppose that on a spaceship we have an astronaut and we have a light clock. If this light clock is at rest relative to the astronaut, then we can write down an expression for the length of time between ticks of the clock as measured by the astronaut. This is very simple to do because between each tick of the clock, the astronaut sees the light beam travel vertically up and then vertically down. If the separation between the mirrors is a distance d, then the time between ticks of the light clock as measured by the astronaut is the distance traveled by the light beam, so one length d, and then one length back down d, so 2d, divided by the speed of the light beam, which is the speed of light c. All of this is nice and simple, but now let's introduce a new observer watching the spaceship from Earth, who sees the spaceship zoom past at some constant velocity, which we'll call v. Now let's make a crucial assumption. Let's assume that the speed of light in a vacuum is a constant for all observers, if this is the case, then what does the observer on Earth see happen inside the spaceship? For the astronaut in the spaceship, the light beam is just bouncing vertically up and down between the two mirrors. But this isn't what the observer on Earth sees. The observer on Earth sees the mirrors of the light clock moving through space, which means that they see the light beam travel along a diagonal path. To make things clearer, let's draw a diagram. Let's say that the mirrors are located here, when the beam of light is first emitted from the bottom mirror. Now, because the beam of light takes time to travel between the two mirrors, according to the observer on Earth, by the time the light beam reaches the top mirror, the mirrors will have moved through space to this position here. So by the time the light beam has traveled to the top mirror, the mirrors are located here. And then the same again for when the light beam travels down to the bottom mirror. So what the observer on Earth sees is the light beam travelling along a diagonal path, like this. Let's call the length of time between ticks of the light clock, as measured by the observer on Earth, capital T. If we want to know what capital T is, we need to work out the length of this red line. So let's put in some distances. This distance here is the distance between the mirrors, which we've called D. And we also know what this distance down here is. This will be the distance travelled by the light clock during time t. Now the light clock is moving at a speed v, so distance is speed times time, so this distance will be the speed v times the time, capital T. Now let's take a look at this triangle on the left here. If I draw it down here, this is a right angle triangle, and it's got a height given by d, and it's got a base which will be half of this total length here, so it'll be vt divided by 2. Now we can use Pythagoras' theorem to work out what the length of the hypotenuse is, which is the red line here. It's going to be the square root of d squared plus v squared t squared divided by 4. Okay, It's just the square root of the sum of the squares of both sides. So this length here is square root d squared plus v squared t squared over 4. And because this triangle is exactly the same as this one just flipped, it will also have a red length d squared plus v squared t squared divided by 4. So the time between ticks of the light clock as measured by the observer on Earth, this capital T, 
is just going to be the distance traveled by the light beam, which is two lots of this square root d squared plus v squared t squared divided by four, and then divided by the speed of light, which is c. Now, this isn't quite the end of the story because you can see that capital T appears on both sides of this equation. So we're going to need to do some algebra to clear this up. After a bit of algebra then, we arrive at our result. It's good to see that this result agrees with our previous one. If the light clock is stationary, then the speed v is zero, and then this expression is just t equals 2d divided by c, which is the same as this one. Now you can quite clearly see that for some general speed v, this expression down here for capital T is going to have a different value to the one for little t up here. But how different is it? Well, we can express capital T in terms of little t to see what the difference is. This expression up here tells us that c times little t is equal to 2d, and we can see that we have a 2d appearing in our expression for capital T down here. So we can substitute for 2d. This tells us that capital T is equal to ct, c little t, divided by the square root of c squared minus v squared. We can tidy this up a bit by dividing the top and bottom of our fraction by c. This tells us that t is equal to little t divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. This tells us that the time between ticks of the light clock as measured by the observer on Earth is equal to the time between ticks of the clock as measured by the astronaut multiplied by some factor, which is called the gamma factor. So we have capital T is equal to gamma little t, where gamma is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. And that is our final result. Now the gamma factor is always larger than 1. This means the time between ticks as measured by the observer on Earth is always larger than the time between ticks as measured by the astronaut. We've now answered our question, what does the observer on Earth see? They see the light clock ticking at a slower rate than the astronaut does. And that is all there is to it. If you see a moving clock, you'll see it tick at a slower rate than you would expect. But this doesn't just apply to the light clock. This applies to everything else on the spaceship too. The observer on Earth will see everything in the spaceship lasting a longer time than would be expected if the spaceship was stationary. Everything will look as if it's in slow motion. If you look back at how we arrived at this conclusion, you'll notice that the only non-obvious assumption we made was that the speed of light in a vacuum is a constant for all observers. This is what's called the light postulate, and it's one of only two postulates that special relativity is built from. Now you may have an objection to all this. Sure, the light clock may appear to be ticking at different rates relative to the astronaut and to the person on Earth, but would that really mean that time itself slows down in the moving spaceship. If instead of a fancy light clock, we put an ordinary alarm clock onto the spaceship, wouldn't both the astronaut and the observer on Earth see this clock ticking at the same rate? This is where the second of the two postulates I mentioned comes in, the principle of relativity. The principle of relativity simply states that the laws of physics are the same for all inertial observers. Now the meaning of inertial is a little bit subtle, and I explore this more in other videos. But for our purposes here, both the astronaut and the observer on Earth can be considered inertial observers. And so this means that the laws of physics must be the same for both of them. Now, if you wanted to claim that only the light clock slowed down and not another ordinary alarm clock also placed on the spaceship, then you'd be violating the principle of relativity. The laws of physics would not be the same for all inertial observers, since the astronaut and the observer on Earth would see the light clock ticking at a different rate relative to the alarm clock. If the laws of physics are the same for all inertial observers, then there can't be an experiment like this which produces different results for each of the observers. The conclusion then is that if we adopt both principles of relativity, the light postulate and the relativity principle, then if the person on Earth sees the light clock running slow in the spaceship, they also see everything else in the spaceship running slow too. They literally see time slow down in the moving spaceship. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you found this interesting. Please like and subscribe for more. Shots in the Quark.